Ooh, hello there my fellow Scarians, good times with Scar here, and welcome to the Q&A video that I promised you in our update vlog that we just had over the weekend. And I'm still in the same spot that I was in during that video. I am computerless, I am lost to wander the halls of the house, just back and forth. Until then, we're gonna make some vlogs, we're gonna work on our studio setup, which I haven't quite got to yet, which I'm still kind of planning it all out, so that'll be our next video. And guys, thank you so much for all the support in the last episode. It was very, very much appreciated to see each and every one of you guys leaving a positive comment. I very much appreciate that. Especially during this time, it's incredibly stressful not to create videos, and to see you guys being supportive, that is absolutely very much appreciated. Just very, very much. Feel, I feel, I feel the feels. You guys um, mean so much to me. Okay, so we got to get into the Q&A. I want to jump right on into it. And Sarah comes in here. Scar, what do you want to paint or draw? And what is your favorite medium? What do I want to paint? I would like to paint, you know what I want to paint? I want to paint some of my Minecraft builds. That is something I've always wanted to do, but I've never done, or like draw them. So say we take the Scarland Roller Coaster, or the Frontier Outpost, or Scarlandia. Any of those ones I think would be really cool to paint and or draw. Uh, my favorite medium has been kind of like acrylics. I'd like to go to oils. Um, maybe there's some like water soluble oils that look kind of cool. They look like a little easier maintenance. Um, but that is my favorite medium, and that's what I would uh, paint and draw. Green Potato asks, what kind of breed is Jelly? Jelly's actually meowing at my door right now. Jelly's an American short hair. She's like silver, tabby, and white, something along those lines. Um, and she's 11, I think, now. So Jelly, Jelly's an older cat. She's an older cat. That's why I guess she likes to sleep on the router now. Crystal asks, Scar, if Jelly was to have a doggy companion, what kind of breed would it be? Um, I would love to have maybe like some kind of a husky dog, maybe a clique. It's a smaller version of a husky. I think that would be pretty cool. I also like Portuguese water dogs. Those are cool dogs. Kyleos, very important dog. Important, very good dog. Um, also, what was the dog that Wishbone was? Do you guys remember that TV show, an old, old TV show on PBS? There was a dog. And he was kind of the host of the show, if you will. There were some kids and the dog kind of ran around and he always dreamed of books and like he loved reading and stuff like that. And they would make these kind of reenactments of say, like something from a book. And they'd go back into olden times. Say if it was medieval time, they'd go back to some castle for some period book. And uh, there would be Wishbone as a character in it, but everyone would treat him like a human, but he was a dog. It was strange, but I liked it. I loved it. So maybe a Jack Russell Terrier too. I do like those. What is my favorite museum? That is a good question. I would say my favorite museum that I've been to would be the, the Disney Family Museum in the Presidio in San Francisco. It is a really great museum and it documents Walt Disney's life from when he was born until he died. And it is a really great museum. They have a lot of traveling exhibits there, so if you're interested in a lot of like animation art and things along those lines, um, that's a really great place to see originals. Uh, another thing they have there is a gigantic model of Disneyland in Walt's dream. So it's everything that he kind of dreamed about and mentioned before he had died. They've kind of put it all into a model. It's, you know, of course, not accurate to how Disneyland was then nor today, but it encompasses all of his dreams in there. And it's just amazing to look down. It's got a room. So it's a room, a little cylinder like this. And you start up here and you just kind of go, you know, all the way down closer and closer to the model and on the walls on the sides, there is, you know, the Lily Bell. If you're familiar with the history of the Disneyland, like, that is Walt's Backyard Railroad that he kind of started the process of making Disneyland with, right? That's how he started getting the inspiration for it, and that's there, and a bunch of other really cool things. And it's right up my alley. I mean, I've got my Wet Enterprises shirt on today, apparently, so that's my favorite museum. Bella asks, what is your favorite Star Wars character from the light and from the dark? Well, I was thinking about this, and it's very, actually very simple, and it's two kind of obscure characters. And one of them is this guy. He is a Hoth Trooper. For some reason, as a kid, I dreamed of this action figure. I finally got it, and I loved it. I played with this thing so much. Whenever I was like, you know, trying to be one of the characters, I was this guy. I just loved his character with the goggles, and he was also a Jedi. I mean, I made it up, I made him up, but uh, he had his own character. He was a Jedi, he was pretty awesome. Uh, another character that I always liked from the dark side is just a simple stormtrooper. I've always liked them for some reason. I just thought their their character, like their design aesthetic, is really cool. Um, I always wanted to dress up one, dress up as one for Chris. 
Halloween. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, those, those are two kind of obscure characters, but they're my favorite. Shane asks, what is my favorite Lego set and will I make Lego videos? So we'll get to the Lego videos after we talk about our favorite set. So my favorite set is something that I have yet to build and that is the Saturn V rocket. It is in a box still. It, it, it's, I, I know, I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed. Um, it's still in a box, but I will be making videos. So going on to that, I'm going to do streams. So we're going to have a stream where we're actually in this area right here. I'm going to move all my recording stuff over one and then set up this as a permanent uh, art and or Lego stream area. And from here, I'll be able to do those things. Like I'll be able to make the, uh, the Saturn V rocket and I've got like a TIE fighter and wait, I have a Y-Wing too. I've got a whole bunch of Legos set up for this too. And uh, super excited about that. So yeah. My favorite set is something that I have not built. As a kid, my favorite set was actually a rescue helicopter. It was like the the rescue, I used to call it Q rescue, but it was really just rescue. Um, and uh, it was my favorite. I think it was like black and yellow, so the yellow um, highlights around it. That was my favorite, along with the police bow. These things were saving people and it was good times. So this is the question I've gotten uh, quite a bit is where do I want to travel and it ties in very good with Nathan's question is where is the furthest I've ever traveled? So the furthest I've ever traveled I believe is Florida. So I live on the west coast of Florida, it's 3,000 something miles, maybe a little more than that. Um, so not very far really. And uh, so that's the first I've ever traveled, but where do I want to travel? I want to travel to Europe. I want to go to Japan. Now it's very difficult with the way I breathe to be able to be on a plane for that long as a plane's cabin altitude is around 8,000 feet. And it's difficult for me to breathe under that altitude. So I have like all these schemes, right? I want to go fly on a 787 or an A340, I believe. Both those have a cabin pressure around 6,000 feet and maybe have a stopover. So if I fly from the west coast to like New York and then fly over to Europe, you kind of cut that in half so it's not a 12 hour flight and you, you can have a little bit of time to rest and then make your last leg. Now going to Japan, that's another story because I guess you could have a layover in Hawaii maybe. So I've been thinking about this a lot. I, I've actually had a lot of time on my hands without my computer. Um, so I've been trying to figure that out. I want to fly, I want to travel. It's something I'd like to do more of on my channel or at least create a new channel, more of a travel vlog and vlog to maybe even inspire other disabled people. Like just, you, can, you gotta grab life when you still can and go after it. Um, hashtag scar travel vlogs. Uh, I just got to convince my brother and stuff. Uh, we should do that more often. At least maybe a trip to Disneyland. That would be great. But yeah, you might want to know. You know why I want to go to Tokyo. I want to go to Tokyo Disney Seas. That's an amazing park. But I uh, also would love to go to Japan. It's a really cool place. And Europe. Man, I want to see some castles. And Harry Potter too. Doc Mystic asks, Scar, what is that thing on your neck? I get this question a lot. I don't really answer it. So I guess I will. This is a trach scar. This was a, they, they cut a scission here and then placed a breathing tube into my neck when I wasn't breathing so well in 2007. I went to a routine appointment to kind of look at some options like BiPAPs, sit vents to kind of help me um, to ventilate myself uh, because I wasn't breathing well then. Um, I am breathing better than I than I was then today, so that's that's a good thing. Um, but uh, the doctor took one look at me. She's like, this isn't gonna work. She wheeled me into the ICU and within two hours, they had put in um, a trach. And then a day after that, I got pneumonia. I was in the hospital for a month. About two months later, I went to Mayo Clinic and they were able to wean me from a vent because I was completely de vent dependent at that time. So I could not come off the vent. I could not breathe on my own. So after quite some time of rehabilitation, you know, get my muscles a little bit stronger, uh, I was able to get off the, the vent and I've been breathing on my own since then, thankfully. So I just use oxygen and things along those lines um, that keeps me going. But uh, yeah, I count my lucky stars every day that I am not on a vent. Imperial Wizard asks, Scar, when will you have a server for your friends? That is something that I do plan on doing and it is something that I want to do. I would love to have a, a like a Patreon kind of server, things along those lines. The technical side always kind of scares me a little bit. Like I, I want it to be good. I want it to be something that you're excited to play on, that works, and you're happy on and things along those lines, but it always kind of scares me out because I'm poor on the technical side. Like I'm not super great at all the technical things and it always scares me off. So it will come, I promise you that. I just need to get over that. Daniel asks, can we see Jelly more often? Sure, you can see Jelly right now. She's asleep on the router, look at her. S Games asks, what kind of disease do you have and what does it do to you? So the disease weakens me. 
It weakens all the muscles and when your muscles are weak, then you have other symptoms. So when your diaphragm is weak, it's more difficult to breathe. Um, it also can affect your digestion system and different things along those lines. So when certain systems are just weakened, and then there's a whole other category of symptoms that then go along with that system being weak. And that's kind of where I'm at. I have to use a wheelchair, I have to use oxygen, I have to use a feeding tube, a drain on my stomach, things along those lines. So yeah, it's not super great. It's not fun, but you gotta make the best with it because it's the only body you have. Asher Rock asks, what is your favorite season? I like that. I like that question. What I like is transition seasons. So I like spring to summer, fall to winter. I usually get really super bored of whatever season you're currently in, um, but I do have a preference for summer. But uh, I love the change. Like I love when the leaves are turning or when the leaves are starting to turn green. That's my favorite. So any transition season, when you're kind of going from spring to summer, fall to winter, that is my favorite. Bob Loves Cheese, which is a great name by the way, asks, would you rather have Minecraft as your only video game you could play or play every video game except Minecraft? That's a hard question. I would probably have to say Minecraft in the end because Minecraft's a sandbox game. You can create whatever you want within it. Say if it was some kind of a linear game, as much as I love Bioshock, it would get really boring playing Bioshock over and over and over again. But with Minecraft, I can create my own game. I can create a house. I can create my own world. I can create whatever I want in it. So I can always find something to do in Minecraft. That's why I've been playing it since 2010 because there's always something new and interesting around the corner when it comes to Minecraft. Surprisingly, I usually get bored of games, but Minecraft is just something I just absolutely never get bored of. The Minecrafter asks, why did you choose YouTube as your career path? I always say that uh, YouTube and Twitch choose you, you don't choose them. <laughs> because you, you create the best content you possibly can and you throw it out into the world and hope somebody enjoys it, somebody watches it, and it's not really up to you. You know, you can do the best you can in your content, but uh, it's up to the end user and of course the, the platform. So yeah, YouTube and Twitch, they choose you. Thunder Games asks, what do I use to edit and how long does it take? So I use Premiere Pro to edit and I use OBS to record and stream with. Um, editing doesn't take a super long time. What takes a lot of time is just the actual building process, the gathering. So any given Hermitcraft episode could take about eight hours or so. Um, you know, when that's, that's gathering resources, that's recording, that's doing off camera work. Um, but what I do to save a lot of time is that I will record a portion, so say the intro, and I'll throw it in Premiere, and I'll cut off the ends and set it how I want, and then I'll record the next segment, and the next, and the next, and I'll each segment I throw into Premiere. So as I'm going along through the video, I'm also editing. So when I hit the last record clip, and I'm done with that, I just add that and I'm done recording. But that's not really the, the main time consuming portion. It takes about 45 minutes to render, it takes another 45 minutes to upload, and things along those lines. So that's kind of where the editing time takes place is the upload and of course the render. Boris asks, what would I do if I lived in the 19th century? So if I wasn't in my current state, which I don't think I'd be alive, um, if I had like a fully functioning body, I'd maybe work on the railroad. Yes, I totally would work on the railroad. I love trains and uh, I would totally be like a conductor. That would be super, super cool. Shipmaster asks, and this is a question I do get a lot, am I completely incapable of standing? Yes, I have not uh, bared weight on my legs since 2007. So it's been quite some time. Pink Lover asks, which I got a point of side note here. I love seeing some of you guys too from Twitch. So I recognize some of your names from Twitch, which is pretty cool. Um, I would say my favorite video would be the Yellowstone build that we did in season four. That was a really cool one. A runner up would have to be Red Dog's Landscape. Those, those two were my favorite videos. From this particular season, it has to be the Vex Pranks. The Vex Pranks have been my favorite thing from season five. Daniel asks, Scar, is that a Blender for Dummies book? It is, there's a great story that goes along with that book. In 2012, I watched Captain Sparkle's music videos and they were so inspiring. Like creating Minecraft animations just seemed really cool at that time. And I was doing a ton of research on how to do it. I was reading the book, I was working with Blender and all these different things. And now I didn't want to do music videos because that, that wasn't something that I was really passionate about and it's not something that I really liked 
like that much in terms of like the music component. So I wanted to create short films, like very short films that were about Minecraft. So small little animation things, maybe like quirks or gags with the game animated. Um, but unfortunately in 2012, I became very, very sick. So my, my neuromuscular disease took down another direction and uh, I was in the hospital maybe like 12 times that year and there was just, just absolutely no time to ever get that stuff done. By the time I got back into YouTube and getting going with that, um, I just kind of fell out of it and I never did it and then eventually some people did do it and they did way better than I could have ever done it but uh, yeah, at that time I was working really hard to make these little short, maybe like 30 seconds to a minute long animated uh, shorts from Minecraft. I still remember some of the ideas. They, they were pretty cool. Nobody's ever really done them but uh, maybe someday, maybe someday. Next question is coming from somebody that I know I'm gonna butcher your name, so I'm not even gonna try, so I apologize. You know, it's a service I provide to mispronounce people's names. But uh, the question is, do you plan out your bills beforehand or do you jump right into it? So it's a bit of a mixture, right? When it comes to very complicated builds, say like the skyscrapers and things like that, those need a lot of planning. So take the skyscraper for instance, having all the roads coming in and, and the building built onto it, um, that's mostly pre-built, at least in my mind, that is. So in creative, I kind of figured out how the roads would work, nailed that down. And then I took the space that it was on top of it and then kind of tested out a couple designs and then pick one of those. And then once I built it in the world in, in Hermitcraft for real, it's quite a bit different from the original. And that's the best part about doing your builds a bit beforehand, you know, testing them out, is you can see them in a whole new light. I always say when people are learning to build is, build five of the same thing. By the time you hit your fifth build of, the, of what you started it, you thought you were just gonna build the same thing five times, the fifth one's not gonna look anything like the first one. It's gonna look way better, and you're gonna be like, wow, I'm glad I did that, because each time I was like, oh, I can change this color, I can change this way the uh, the depth of the build works and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. Like, there's certain things that I can't. I can just jump in and build. Like, say the landscaping shop in the community area. Just, I just built that just automatically. just went, woo, just built that out. But things like the skyscraper, they do need a lot of planning. Mary asks, do I prefer vanilla Minecraft or modern Minecraft? I would have to say vanilla. Vanilla is something that I've been building and working with in since 2010, but modern's actually caught my interest more and more recently, especially with Foolcraft 3, is that there are some things that I could absolutely never accomplish within vanilla that I can't have modded. So I'm very interested in doing more modded builds. So you're definitely gonna see more of that in the future. Crystal asks, what is my favorite Disney history story? Now, this one I just heard, so it's not so much a story, it's not really funny, it's really sad, actually. Um, back in the very early days of the park, they had what was called an art corner, and in the art corner they had a bunch of cardboard boxes, and you could buy original production cells. And these cells, if you're unfamiliar, are what animated movies back in the day were made of. When everything was hand-drawn, you would hand-drawn these cells, then you'd ink it in, and it would be like a character, like moving. Each cell was a, was a frame from the movie, and these things are incredibly beautiful and very valuable, to especially today. So you could rifle through this box, and you'd be like, oh, Peter Pan, oh, the seven dwarfs. And these things could be worth, you know, anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000 today if it had a background especially. And they were just selling them in a cardboard box in the park. I recently learned that and it it's funny, it's sad at the same time, but uh, it's just an interesting story about how we preserve or perceive art and, and value when it comes to that. But uh, it's an interesting story. Max PVP's ass, Scar, Star Wars or Star Trek? That is a tough one. Spoiler alert till the end of my story. I'm probably just gonna say that I love them both, but as a kid I loved Star Wars, hence all the Star Wars toys uh, from my childhood. But as like a teenager into adult, I really like Star Trek, and that's when I started watching Star Trek maybe, man, I've seen Next Generation probably four or five times like straight through from one to the last season. What was the last season? Seven maybe? I can't remember. Um, and then Voyager, I've seen that two or three times all the way through. Deep Space Nine, Enterprise. I mean, even Enterprise, it wasn't that bad. I actually enjoyed it. Um, I especially enjoyed it the longer the series went on. Um, but yeah, I love Star Trek. Um, Star Wars, I've kind of re kind of uh, kind of kindled my love for it recently. I really liked Rogue One. Uh, Force Awakens was great. The Last Jedi, like, I'm still a little bit iffy on. I mean, how does meditation kill one? I just don't know how over-meditation... 
I mean, that should be a side effect for people that meditate. Over meditation can make you die and disappear. And a tear will fall from Scar's eye. Of missed opportunities. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say both. I, I mean, I love them both for different reasons. Jay asks, Scar, what is your favorite Disney ride? It is definitely Indiana Jones. It's unfortunate it's a ride that I can't go on, but I can go on Radiator Springs. So that's my current favorite ride that I can go on. But my all-time favorite ride will always be Indiana Jones. Great question here. I know you're a fan of Rockstar. Are you going to record Red Dead Redemption when it comes out? And yes, it is. We're going to have cowboy horse riding adventures through the woods. It's going to be amazing. Cannot wait for Red Dead Redemption. Regalist Sir asks, what was your first Lego kit you received as a kid? I can't quite remember off the top of my head what it was, but I remember the first set I ever bought. And it was kind of a beach set. It had some jet skis and uh, a lifeguard tower, um, some little buoys and things along those lines. And uh, it was $19.99 and it took me a long, long, long time of saving up. And uh, eventually my birthday came and I finally had enough. And uh, I bought that thing. And then I remember just maybe like a couple months later, I saved up doing some house chores and things like that. And eventually saved up a whole $7.99. And I was able to buy the Western wagon. Unfortunately, as a young kid, I then learned that there is such thing as a tax. And I never could figure out why they don't just put the tax on the price on the shelf. Because then I would have known that it would be more than $7.99. I was quite upset about that at the time. I had to save a little longer. <laughs> Let's end this question here is uh, Brexton asks, how do you stay so positive? It seems no matter what is going on in your life, including this, you are positive and always manage to see the bright side. That's a good question. Um, yeah, there is definitely times where I am down as all down can be uh, when it just feels like the world is crushing upon your shoulders. And it, it's really hard. Um, there are definitely times in the year, especially maybe in um, December, January, that was really, really hard, like like emotionally and physically. And uh, the best way of always getting through this is always to look out and see the positive in things. There's always a positive thing. It's just you have to see it. You have to see it out there and there's a positive. And if you can put more of your energy and thoughts towards that than the negative, and then you you feel better. Like his, his, the more you go towards that side, the better you are. It's hard. It's definitely hard. It's easy to kind of fall into the negative side and think, you know, everything's always against you and things along those lines. But it's much more difficult to always look towards the positives and always try hard and be the best you can be. Um, and it just makes you feel better once you get there. Um, but yeah, it's another thing too that helps you kind of stay motivated is you see a lot of other people that have it far, far worse than you. And you're like, you know what? A person has it far worse than I am and they have a positive, great attitude. I want to be like that. I don't want to be negative. I don't want to be, you know, this person over here that's always thinking poorly of things in themselves. No, I want to be over here and I want to be the positive person because when you do think in that way, things are just, things, things are a little bit easier instead of always being negative. And at least I try. I'm not always successful and nobody ever is. Um, but as long as you always just try to stay on that side, things things always kind of work out a little bit better than they were if you were on like the negative side. At least that's what I try to be. And uh, like I said, it's not always easy. You don't always succeed, but at least you try. And uh, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, q and A. I I really enjoyed looking through these comments and seeing what your guys, uh, what's your thought process on me? You're like, hmm, what kind of Legos does Scar like? I like that. that. That's a fun question. I really enjoyed this, guys. And I'm so, so sorry. Once again, there hasn't been any videos. I'm working really hard on getting this all set up and fixed. And we'll be making videos once again very soon on all sorts of cool new things. Um, with new seasons and modded and tutorials and Jurassic Park, by the way. That's coming. But anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.